Hello, in this video I want to take you through, step by step, the Turn Broken Broken into your superpower workbook and uh, let's lay some foundations for your future. You can get the free uh, workbook as download, the link is in the description box below. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Goddard, I'm author of Finding Lily and the A to Z of Emotional Abuse. On this channel, I talk about healing from emotional abuse and divorcing emotionally from the abuser, as well as divorcing physically. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. In, and if you're returning, welcome back and thank you. And thank you so much to all my new subscribers over the last few weeks and months. In this video, I will take you step by step through the turn broke and broken into your superpower workbook we will lay some foundations for your future. If you haven't already got a copy, you can pause the video now and go and follow the link which is in the description box below. Your life was destroyed in every area, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually and financially. So the aim is that at the end of the workbook, you will have a clearer idea of what you need or what you want from your divorce as well as the knowledge, strength, and the ability to step into your superpower, a warrior goddess, or maybe a god power. And if you stay to the end, I will talk you through an exercise that I refer to a lot in my videos, the one, two, three, or it's an ABC exercise. The warrior is confident, has an inner strength, is assertive and disciplined. They're active and brave and you may feel none of these at the moment, or you might be able to tap into one or two. But the hope is that you can start to align and to create a plan of action that works for you. I've been where you are right now. It was my version of what you're going through, but every level I've experienced. I had so many questions and they started with if only and maybe. And then they changed, but one thing I realized was that I was actually broken on every level. And through the financial coercion, I was broke as well. And what I do know is that I am more whole now than I have ever felt in my life. And there are, I'm sure, a few missing parts of me, but I'm confident that as I move on in my next quest, I'll be collecting those bits along the way. A bit like a computer game where you collect all the items and where the character bumps into someone and they drop their bag over the floor. That was me, in my, that is me in my head, collecting the treasure. That treasure is all my missing parts. And if I fall, I see my treasure and I gather them all back up again. I lost faith in everything and I questioned every part of my life. I wanted to know what happened to me, what I was missing and why I kept repeating these patterns. Every day we have an opportunity to learn something new or something new about ourselves or about other people. Recovering from an emotionally abusive relationship might be the one of the hardest things that you have ever had to deal with. Then just as you're building back your energy and perhaps your brain starts to function a little better, you have to go through divorce. And why are these relationships so hard to heal from? So the damage puts you in a state of confusion. You had no idea that the abuse was actually taking place. It's a bit like Chinese water torture. It happened very, very slowly and it turned you insane. You're about to go head to head with the emotional abuser. And if you're not battle ready, you might come out of this process destroyed again. They have attacked you on every level. You might only just be realizing that. They have not only destroyed your life, they stole your soul. The purpose of this workbook is to repair some of the damage, ensure you understand what it is that you want and that you are emotionally fit. The divorce process is the perfect playground for the emotional abuser to have some fun. It is in full view of everyone and they get great pleasure from causing you pain whilst they lament in front of their audience. 
We will try and lay some foundations for your future. Your life was destroyed in every area, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. So at the end of this workbook, you will have a clear out of idea of what you need or what you want from the divorce, as well as the knowledge and strength and ability to step forward. I will also put the link to the sovereignty and the warrior videos that will help you step into that power. They'll be in the description box below as well. It is easy to bypass some of the emotions coming up and you can use so many different ways. So when you bypass something, you go round it. It could be a road that's been rerouted around a town or, or city so that the traffic is eased. Or it could be, uh, if you're a fan of medical dramas, that you might have heard doctors saying they're going into uh, over to bypass and they're using it to take the pressure off the heart whilst it's being repaired. It's used to take the pressure off and you might be in the midst of this pain at the moment and we all know how tempting it is to look for the exit the escape route out to make it all stop your head might be swimming and you have no idea where these emotions are coming from it's a bit like a pendulum swimming swinging backwards and forth the cognitive dissonance can sometimes be your jailer the mindfuckery that happened has left you trapped in a jail and you're the only person there and feel like you are the jailer as well. Even spirituality can be a bypass for what is going on. And for some, they do head down the spiritual route to avoid the pain. They use it as an, a distraction and creating a new spiritual identity. But what you're really doing is not healing on that deeper level, not healing the wound, you're just plastering over the cracks. In healing, bypassing is the avoidance of something painful, pretending everything is okay. Replacing that thing that caused you pain or numbing the pain or distracting yourself from the pain. And if you've watched any films or dramas where they are set with pirates on trade or traders on ships, their medics gave the patient something to hold on to whilst they poured rum down their throats and put something in their mouths to bite on. By bypassing the pain, you're not understanding what's really going on. However, that isn't to be mistaken with the spiritual awakening that coming out of an emotionally abusive relationship can bring. And this is a fine line. Some people will embrace the awakening, which then brings forward more healing. It's about understanding where the pain is coming from and tracing it back and understanding what caused it. Not just this relationship, but others as well. And this journey can take you to places you've never imagined. So turning to section one, let's look at emotional. Emotional abuse is a pattern of behaviour. One person uses fear, humiliation, guilt or manipulation tactics to gain power over another. So unlike physical abuse, it often goes unnoticed and the damage it causes puts you in a state of confusion. You had no idea it was taking place and like Chinese water torture, it happens very slowly and it turns you crazy. They chipped away at your self-esteem and you began to doubt your own perceptions of reality. The cycle of abuse is emotional abuse. The abuser used many tactics to trap you and gain power and control over you, your life and your finances. They manipulated you into believing you were, they were protecting you when in fact they were abusing you. So where are you emotionally? Using the workbook and the space, describe how you're feeling. When you're coming out of an emotionally abusive relationship, you may want to dive straight back into it. It often feels safer in the relationship than it does out of it. Initially, you might go through a period of being able to breathe. And depending on what is going on, you might then go searching for answers. You'll want to understand who they are and why they do what they do. You may want to label them. You will want them back. You will grab every opportunity they pass your way. 
and you may find yourself feeling crazy and they will tell you you're crazy, you're paranoid when you start to question things. So sit and think where you are emotionally. When I was going through the painful part of the healing, it felt like my heart had been wrenched out and the silent scream that was coming somewhere deep within my soul. I knew this was something that I needed to experience. And I also realised it was the right time to heal this particular wound that had perhaps been festering away for most of my life. I realised that not to experience it would have been burying it, like you might uh, be putting a sticking plaster over the top of a wound or plastering over the cracks, hoping that there was nothing more sinister going on with the foundations. I realised to move on and ignore the pain was perhaps not the best way to deal with it. I knew that at some point I was going to come back and hit me again. It would be like a ticking bomb and I just wouldn't know when that was going to happen. I realised I didn't have to experience it fully, I could distract myself and move on to a new relationship or to jump into bed with a new partner. I realised that I could numb it through alcohol, drugs or even prescription drugs or through food. I realised I could be busy, I could involve myself in projects or charities or other areas. I could hide away in my work, I could travel. Consider taking action and divorcing emotionally from the abuser. Being emotionally divorced means you can hear their name and feel nothing. You receive an email and you feel nothing and you get a message and there's nothing. Every wound they created has been healed, all the ones they triggered anyway. And the invisible bonds are severed. So sit for a few minutes, see what you write about how you're feeling emotionally, and then turn the page and list the actions that you can take today, tomorrow, or very gradually over the next week to allow you to break free from them. Feel free to press pause at any point if you need extra time.
Section two is physical. So emotional abuse affects us on so many different levels and isn't uncommon for people coming out of this type of relationship to experience complex post-traumatic stress disorder and or adrenal fatigue. You unwittingly and unwillingly entered a war zone. Your focus was on protecting yourself from dying and your body might be showing signs of stress. You might jump at the slightest sound or you might sleep with the light on. I found I was experiencing nightmares, something I'd never done before. You may need to be disciplined in this area. Your life was consumed by the abuser. You made sure that their needs were met over yours and everybody else's. You likely spent your life walking on eggshells, ensuring everything you did or said didn't upset them or trigger a rage or managing situations around them so this didn't happen. Be honest with yourself. How has this affected you physically? I remember looking in the mirror and not recognising the person looking back at me. This is going to take strength and discipline. Self-care is needed. Creating areas in your life that are safe. Making time for yourself. Finding foods and rituals that will support your physical body. Finding an exercise practice that will help you. Being gentle and forgiving with yourself. List what you can put in place to support your healing. When I was writing my book, The A to Z of Emotional Abuse, I was amusing about this experience being a mirror. The abuser mirroring back what we needed to see in ourselves that we can embrace and love. I wrote, part of you fell in love with yourself. They were mirroring all the amazing qualities within you. Everything they are missing, the empathy, caring for others, your inner beauty and your deep forgiving soul. I believe these people are very insecure and they are constantly needing validation. I don't know if they realize how much damage and hurt they cause, or in fact they care. But I want you to realise you fell in love with yourself in a roundabout, twisted way. You are an amazing person. I know you are hurting and you have been for a long time. But now is the time to fall back in love with yourself. The only person you are responsible for is you. You may believe you can help them. After all, you may still believe you are the only one who has ever fully understood them, but sadly you can't. You might be asking, what's happening to me? What am I missing? Why do I keep repeating these patterns? So take the time now. Ask yourself, how am I feeling physically? And then turn the page and list all the things that you can put in place to support your healing. Feel free to press pause at any point if you need extra time.
section three, mental. Yes, this is different from emotional. Your cognitive function might be reduced through the trauma you've experienced. The brain is such an amazing thing. You knew on some level that you what you were experiencing was harmful and the brain can shrink to protect itself from further damage. In a similar way to what you can do emotionally and physically, consider what is happening to you mentally. Are you still being triggered? Are you experiencing flashbacks? Do you go into fight flight in certain situations? So where are you mentally? Again, use the space that's provided. This is going to take bravery and discipline creating areas in your life that are safe, making time for yourself, finding foods and rituals that will help support your mind. List what you can do and put into place now that will support your healing. Feel free to press pause at any point if you need extra time. Section four is spiritually. You might now be questioning everything about your life or just life in general. The abuse that took place creates confusion. No, not knowing what's real and what's not real. Your perception of reality was changed. You might still be believing what they told you is the truth or you're questioning everyone and everything you've ever been told. And then you start to understand what happened to you and start to question everything all over again on a deeper level. What if this happened for reason? What if by this experience you can heal on a deeper level? If you've experienced any form of emotional abuse, it is likely this isn't the first time this has happened. On some level, it wasn't unfamiliar. So start to question where you are spiritually and use the space provided to describe how you're feeling, what you're questioning. This is going to take strength and bravery. 
again creating areas in your life that are safe making time for yourself quietening the mind chatter do some research and find some meditation music and grounding exercises that you can use to help you when your stress levels or your stress hormones kick in Um, when you've described how you're feeling spiritually make a list of all the things that you can put in place now to support your healing feel free to press pause at any point if you need extra time section five financially so one of the quickest ways for an abuser to control you is financially it stops you from walking away and abandoning them and they also have this weird obsession with money that's in my experience you might have come out of this relationship broke as well as broken they couldn't contribute to or pay towards because and insert your excuse they have huge bills to pay or they needed their money for something else and yet they're so generous in certain areas or towards others. They find relationships boring. They play the game of dutiful husband or wife or partner, but it holds nothing for them apart from being a mask to hide behind. I would like you to think about is the times that they were so generous and then the times that they didn't have any money to pay coercing you to use money if you had any savings. And then you walk away and you have nothing left or you have huge debts. They, on the other hand, have moved on to a new life debt free and in a far better position financially. So I want you to use the space that's provided to think about right out where you are financially. It is going to take confidence and bravery to look at this area and you might be feeling a mixture of emotions wondering how all this happened. 
list what you can put in place to support yourself financially, to support your healing. Feel free to press pause at any point if you need extra time. When we bypass our emotions, we're denying our shadow side. It's a bit like denying being related to the drunk, bigoted uncle who slumped in the corner at weddings. Our shadow side is the part of ourselves we hide from others, and sometimes even ourselves. We are all multifaceted, like a diamond. There are so many different faces and elements to us. So bypassing can stop you healing your wounds particularly shame, guilt and abandonment. Personally, I believe the real healing comes from experiencing the emotions that are held in the body and finding and healing them, the wounds, releasing the trauma that has been held there for years, possibly even decades. And finally to section six. Going into the divorce process, you need to sit down and start looking at what you want. You need to heal the wounds and you will need to do some planning yourself. Make sure that you're emotionally divorced first from them and then start thinking about what you actually want your life to look like and start creating maybe a vision board. It might be that you have two professionals, one for the divorce process and one for you. It is important to remember that they have already decided your worth, that they will want to win at any cost, and they really do not care by how little, as long as they win. And part of this win is to make you pay in some way. It might be monetary, but it also might be with your mind or with your soul. You are not a person to them, you are an object. And this is why they were able to walk away from you without a backward glance and just move on, leaving you to clear up their mess. As an object, you hold no value to them, but they understand that the divorce is a process and it does. Relationships to the emotional abuser are projects. They studied you from the very beginning 
so they know exactly what they need to do and say to hurt you. The abuser knows your triggers and they know how to execute them, mainly for their pleasure. And when they say they don't want to fight, they just want to move on, what they really mean is they don't want you to fight them. When you divorce emotionally, you're in a strong position to say no. You're in a strong position to make decisions that suit your agenda, not theirs. And you're in a stronger position to get the divorce that works for you. You're in a stronger position to spot the manipulation. You're in a stronger position to walk away if you choose. You are in a stronger position to call out their behavior and stop it. Please try and divorce emotionally first. If you're stuck in the trauma bond, you will still remember the persona they created at the beginning of the relationship. The one who was so kind and loving towards you. Stuck in the trauma bond, you might believe this is still all your fault. So with section six, I reference it a lot in other videos. Make a list of absolutely everything. So it might be you can mentally go room to room and write down every physical item, uh, pieces of jewellery, it might be cars, properties. Write absolutely everything down, stocks, bonds, anything. And then you take the list and you run through it. And in column A, you put the things that are non-negotiable for you. That's absolutely everything that you want. It won't be everything on the list. It'll be everything that is non-negotiable. There's no way that you're divorcing without getting this. In column B, you put all the things that you might be willing to give up. There, you know, you could go through your list and uh, put things that are really important to you, maybe uh, number one, and not so important, get number two, and you're not interested, number three. And it's really important that you mark the number threes because they're your bargaining tools. But so, in column B, are the things that you might be willing to give up. Be good if you got it, but if you have to negotiate, they go in the middle section. In column C, you put everything that you would be happy for them to win. This list is for your eyes only. When you're splitting money and assets, if they are in a better financial position, ask for more than you would be happy to settle with. They are going to negotiate you down anyway. They're never going to negotiate upwards. Always ask for more. And in that way, they see it as a win. The column C is everything that you're happy for them to have. Again, you might have used column B for bargaining. And column A is the things that you are going to, uh, that are non-negotiable. Also, if you've got children, this is really important. There are two things you need to do. One is negotiate prior or in this divorce process any important dates like birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any events, what do you do? Do you have family uh, get togethers? You want to make sure that the children are available for that. What happens? How are you going to split holidays? Make sure it's all done. And the second thing you do is you put clauses in that are renegotiate clauses. We're going to every three years renegotiate. Your children grow. What works as when they're five and six doesn't work when they're 15 and 16. There's a huge difference. Put it might be every year or every eldest child's birthday that you negotiate. It doesn't mean that you have to change things. It just means that there's an opportunity to discuss the needs of the children and see whether this is working for them. If going deeper is something that you'd like to do, you can book a session with me and the details uh, are of my website I'll put in the description box below. There's nothing worse than the divorce being finalised and realising they've screwed you over. It might feel like your life is burning to the ground. I mean, you, you may never recover from this, but you will rise again like the phoenix rises from the ashes. Trust your intuition and find a tribe who know how to support you through this process. 
I'll put the link to my Facebook group also in the description box below. Set boundaries, make sure you stick to them and check in with yourself and ask how you feel and keep this workbook and you can repeat the process many times, checking in emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. See what's going on in your life and how you've changed and how your needs have changed. If you'd like to find out more ways of working with me, I'll put the links to my website below. I'll also put the links to both my books, Finding Lily and the A to Z of Emotional Abuse, and the other free workbook that I've got, which is Self Care is Vital. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos or the channel, and I'm sending you loads and loads and loads of love.